Hi. And we're live here at Lucky 13 Podcast. Hello. Hey, hey. Not really live, but we're here. We're here. So we have uh, Karen Crisis with us today, which Hello. I'm very excited about. New York legend, New York metal legend, Karen Crisis. Yeah. Nice. What would you have considered Crisis? What genre? Because I hear people argue about that all the time. Yeah, I don't... You don't even know. No, I have no idea. <laughs> the people saying, oh, you know, you were from the hardcore scene. No, you're from metal. And then hardcore and metal kind of came together at a certain point in New York. Right. Yeah, and so if, people and say metalcore. And that's it. If you yeah. look at... Like, it was funny because I was researching... I started going back and looking at crisis stuff, and it was always referred to as like metalcore. You know what I mean? But but it was and, before there was metalcore. Yes. Right? So how well, when when did crisis get together? When when did you guys start? Nineteen ninety three. Oh wow! Mm-hmm. Wow! A long time ago. Yeah. yeah. I was three. Yeah. You were three in nineteen ninety three. Little baby. Yeah. yeah. Little baby. In other words, I am ancient. <laughs> Listen, well, it's all right. Yeah. Thank you. It's all right. I was fucking not in a, uh, no. 1993, I was I was in a band. You were, but I was. In, uh, you were in your teens, weren't you? 93, I was 19. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, that's what I thought. How old were you? 23. All right. <laughs> not bad. Not bad. Come yeah. on, guys. You would have been my friend if I was three. <laughs> no, I fucking no. hate babies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm not a pedophile, so. So, so Karen, maybe people don't know that you were you were in crisis, and then you had another band who that I can't pronounce. It's two Oswald words. The witches. No, between. <laughs> no, you're lying. <laughs> no, really, there was another band. I think she would know. Um, it was it was it was two words. Maybe you were only a guest. I'll tell you right now, and you could tell you me what it is. Mm. That wasn't really a band; it was more of a project. Maybe it was yeah. a project. Something that I looked up and I saw something else that you were in, and I was like, oh, I didn't even know about that. Are no. you from New York originally? Chicago. Chicago. All right. F. L. Duath. Oh, that's Davide's band. Okay, but yeah. you just did stuff in it. Yes, I, I see. On, on an album. Yeah. Cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. Chicago. So the scene out there. I mean, at the time was like you know bands like Ministry and uh, were they kind of prevalent at the time when you were out there? When I no? was out there, yes. It was like the whole Wax Track scene. I worked at Wax Tracks Records for a little while. Oh, there right. was a great music scene in Chicago. Yeah, Lots yeah. Of raw, industrial, experimental performance yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know if you ever went to the Gargoyle Mechanique in the Lower East Side. I'm probably the only person in New York who remembers Sounds the cool. Gargoyle Mechanique. It was on like Avenue B and 2nd Street or somewhere over there. And it was kind of like that but if he didn't get to go there i can't really explain it but it was it was a really good music scene they had really great venues um a lot of bands you know touring around there was just like kind of anything you wanted to hear it would come through chicago right, so it was right, right. really interesting to grow up in that environment sort of yeah there was a lot of good a lot of good bands came out and a lot of industrial metal i guess kind of started and skinny puppy are they from chicago area I don't know. I don't think so. No? No. The Canadian, I think, aren't I don't, they? I'm not remembering. I don't uh, Detroit either. popped into my mind, but that maybe isn't true. Yeah. I don't know why that I don't popped remember. into my mind. But there were some good bands that came out of Chicago. Um, when did you leave Chicago? Well, I grew up just outside of it, but I left to go to Manhattan in 1991. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Uh, and I. Uh, when did you come to New York? 97. But 97. my first trip to New York was 1992. Yeah. And... Uh, was it, to oh, get, the, was it to get drugs? <laughs> no, no, that was the second trip to New York City. Okay. The, fir, the, the first time I oh came... Uh, no, the first time I came, I went to go see Typo Negative in Jersey at... Oh, um, God, that's, that's not New York, no, 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 Jersey. No, no, but yeah. so, so what happened after that, though... My fir- yeah, my first trip to New York City was... We went to Studio One, I think it was called, in New Jersey. Uh, we went to go see them, and then afterwards, I would never been to the city before. Right. And the Grateful Dead was in town, so we're like, oh, we can get drugs from the Deadheads down <laughs> so in the wait, village. So it was to get drugs. Sort of. Like, it was <laughs> kind of part I of the thing. Knew it. But no, I, I, my first trip to New York City, so we, we parked on St. Mark's Place back when you could park on St. Mark's Place. And next <laughs> to Coney Island High was that, like, um, there was like a fucking, they used to have AA meetings and shit. In there. Oh, yeah. I went Remember in there drunk by accident once. Yeah. Oh, I stumbled in the it's middle of an ago. AA meeting, wasted, looking That's for a hilarious. bathroom. Well, what, it's really embarrassing, actually. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, well, they're all probably like, this is the devil. So, yeah. <laughs> so we, we parked in front of there, and my fucking friend had a gun on him. 
and he goes to pull the gun out from underneath the fucking seat because he's like, bro, we're in New York City, man. I gotta carry oh my, my gun with me. Jesus and dude, it looked like Christ. a machine gun. It was a Tech Nine. Like, oh it was my like, God. I was like, what the fuck, man? So he pulls, <laughs> he pulls it out of the car. I'm like, oh, what the fuck, dude? So we go get a. It's like two in the morning. This is what, like, this is what twenty year olds do. Right? Yeah, I was mm-hmm. 18, 19, yeah. I guess. I don't know. So we go to fucking. Uh, we go to get a slice of pizza, and then next thing you know, dude, I thought I was on an episode of Cops. Like fucking cop cars, oh vans, my God. everything no fucking way. pulls up, fucking hands in the air and uh, what? Uh, no. oh yeah dude fucking cop comes How over he kicks cause somebody saw dude it was a looked like a fucking machine gun you know what tech nine looks like somebody it looks like a little machine gun Sounds somebody called crazy. the cops pulling him out of the car so then we I got arrested oh, and spent man. my first night in fucking New York City jail, oh, jail. I was scared fucking shit yeah I'm sure you were I was were. a little kid from the and suburbs and you loved it so much you stayed yeah, well, I came back again, and, and then, uh, yeah, I got in more trouble, more but drugs. I never got arrested again, so. <laughs> All right, well, that's good. Yeah, Congratulations. Well, it was fucking awesome. You learned and your lesson. Dude, and, dude, as soon as they put us in the van, they were like, yo, if you were, if you were black, we would have shot you. I'm like, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, he didn't use the word right. black, though. No, he didn't. <laughs> he certainly that did. That is yeah. so fucked up. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's you fucked know, up. That's how New York was. Wow. Yeah. That makes me angry. Yeah. I mean, uh, we still have that sometimes, and we still have issues, but it was bad then. So that know? was my first experience. So you moved here in 1991. Yes. Um, Where did you move? To yeah. Manhattan? Yes. I went to Parsons School of Design for a year. I got yes. a scholarship there, and I really cool. um, hated it. So I, it got me to New York, which was great. Um, and then that was around the time that... Well, I, le- I didn't go back to school for the next year, and I said, decided I didn't want to go to art school, and um, ended up down by the World Trade Center area, All right. and got an apartment in a, um, a studio with an artist who happened to know the guitar player of Crisis, and they were looking oh, for a perfect. female vocalist, and we ended up meeting it. That's Poof. so cool. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Poof. 13 Destiny. years later. <laughs> I feel like you often don't get your due when they have, like... Oh, that really annoys me. Yeah, I feel no, like... No, not you, the Have other part. people said that to you? I re- that really annoys me when people say that, because it makes me feel like my life isn't valid because I didn't get the due people thought. No, I but I think that you should get more credit for being an awesome female vocalist. Oh, that's nice. I think you're amazing, but, but I think that... You're sometimes overlooked in those in those stupid things. You know what I mean? That's I find right. that annoying. You <laughs> that's, know? Listen, that's all. I, I mean, that's also. You know, uh, that's the times. I mean, shit goes by and you forget about bands. And, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. um, a crisis is one. Listen, Candiria is another example of that. You know what I mean? Yeah. They were one of the first guys doing all that like weird math metal stuff. So that's what happens. You yeah. know what I mean? I'm glad you're not bitter about it. Oh, yeah. God. I mean, my life is really, for me, I mean, that was a really empowering experience. I'm glad it touched other people. I still know people because of the band. But when people say things like that to me, I know they're trying to be nice and complimentary. But it makes me feel like, well, I don't sit around feeling sorry for myself. You know what I mean? Right. Like, life goes on. Life goes on for me. Um, I wouldn't think you would feel bad about it. (laughs) I just think it's odd. I think sometimes the music industry just is, they like, they don't like anything slightly out of the norm or they just don't. Yeah. Well, we, Understand. Yeah, we were a curiosity for the music scene. Like all the big labels knew who we were, but they didn't feel like we were marketable. Right, know? right. Um, so they supported like young girl bands that came around who were, um, and so that didn't annoy me because I was I thought the more the merrier, you know. Right, of course. There were young bands who I met later, and their friends and family were like, "You were such. They were that you were the reason they got into music." But they would pretend, you know, they didn't know about us. That is a little bit <laughs> annoying. Yeah, it's annoying. Um, you know, being that I know that you ripped off my lyrics and things and you can't even admit that you know my dad <laughs> in a radio oh, interview. But really, like, you know, at the end of the day, who, who the fuck It doesn't cares? matter, no. It doesn't matter. It's just, a, it's just another interesting thing that goes on in the world of, you know, yeah. r- recognition. And um, I think it happens to all of us in some way or another. Any know? thought? Like, I know you've played in the past couple of years. Um, any, th- any thought on doing it? More often or anything like that, or no, you just kind of well. Karen has a different project now, which is actually in our jukebox (laughs) called The Gospel of the Witches. Oh, I haven't even heard it. Yeah, it's in the jukebox. Okay, if you want to go, yeah, we're actually working on the new album. We're gonna the drums are gonna be recorded in about like a week and a half. Okay, so um, we played a couple of shows when right when that album first came out, but. I don't know. We'll have to see. Um, I'm one of those people, like, when, when the magic is there, we'll, we'll move on it. And if the magic isn't there for the right conditions, then we won't. You know, it was nice to play those songs live and, like, reconnect with some people out here. 
Um, we have a place you can play if you'd like. You. That would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. We'll see. Who yeah. knows? This is a very different album. It's I don't think it's as much of a live album as the first one mm-hmm. is. So who knows? Yeah. Yeah. Check cool. it out. It's on Spotify. So All right. you I'll, can I'll, actually I'll totally listen check to it. it out. There. I kind of feel stupid. I would have listened to it before the uh, <laughs> before this. Yeah, me yeah. too. Yeah. 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 You guys can go check it's it out right. later. You that's, a, now you know. that's what's now you know. That's the whole point of this shit, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, to learn yeah. things, educate everybody. So, Karen, this is my education. You've moved on to become better known as sort of this healer, witchy type woman now. <laughs> so, my question is that: Was that always part of your life, and maybe was sort of a little more in the background, and now it's become more in the foreground? I would say the best way to describe who I am, because I get asked all these questions about my painting and my music and things, is that I'm more like one of those, you know, I'm, I guess I'm, I was born like sort of a shaman. The reason I like prefer to use the word shaman is not like the whole modern day weekend intensive, you go get your certificate, you know, (laughs) with a bunch of white people who give you a rattle and they're like, no, you're a shaman. Um, My life was really that like I was born into this life being very aware of the spirit world, like ghosts and scary stuff as well as guides. And um, I had all sorts of limitations on my life, whether it be health, finances, family and the spirit world was like but hey focus on your dreams and we'll get you what you need so so karen when you were young i'm sorry to interrupt you but when you were young you did you just think that was normal to like have stuff around you and yes it was hard at times because i felt at night um there was this sensation like people are breaking into the house and how do i protect my family you know so that was like the kind of the ghosts and the scary guys and then there were guides and supporters of my creativity you know so like if I had a goal or a dream or something I wanted to learn and I couldn't afford to go to school or take a class somehow the spirit world would make it happen yeah here's a guitar that you can get for free or Mm -hmm. here's a guy down the street who let you use his four track or you know somehow it's like the spirit world can connect you to people places and things that help you get what you need so my life was more like that like I don't have a lot to have and to hold on to but in terms of experiences and following hopes and dreams the spirit world was like oh we're going to move you into all these wild places and crisis was like that you know I was this very injured introverted person who like could barely say anything to anyone in a public space and here I am joining a band as a front person, right, right. <laughs> right. very That's loud, awesome. explosive kind of band. Yeah, you know. And for me, so for me, that was like um, part of that. I was channeling, you know, I was channeling this power that was bigger than me that made me do things that I couldn't normally do on my own. That was positive. Um, and that's pretty much what my life has been like. So if I had an illness and I couldn't afford to go to the doctor, a little voice in my ear would say, go buy this herb, you know, <laughs> or if I wanted to learn something and I couldn't take a class, oh, here's a vision and you learn everything you need to know from the vision. So I kind of never know what direction my life is going in. It really seems to be depa- um, based on like, what are your hopes and desires? And then the spirit world may say, well, we agree and then bring that about. So maybe Gospel of the Witches will play live. Maybe I'll do something else. I had never planned to write a book about Italy's witches. Um, I wanted to go back there myself, but that was, you know, something the spirit world had in mind. So my whole life rearranged so that I could do this and like end up on mountaintops and in old ladies' kitchens learning all these things. Let's talk about that. So a lot of people probably don't know that you've written this book (laughs) and how you've gone to Italy and into all these weird little villages. So (laughs) talk about how that came about. Well, I... I originally went to Italy on my own in 2009, which is where I met my future husband. We were supposed to make an album together. This was in between Crisis and Gospel of the Witches. And um, we didn't end up making the album at that time, but we had rented this little house in the middle of, like, um, in Tuscany, in the middle of, like, uh, olive fields. It was very witchy. And um, what ended up happening was every day I would, you know, go to take my shower in the morning and there would be this like witch spirit in the bathroom and she would be teaching me things about healing like technical things like chakras and stuff that I didn't know I didn't know what it was I was getting into healing work but I didn't know the educated form of it and so I'd write down all these things and then I'd have to go tell Davide who was like hanging out writing an album underneath a pomegranate Aww. tree like how symbolic <laughs> is that so hey, there's this witch spirit in the house. he's like oh I know she's been waiting for you before you <laughs> arrived and that's how our days were like it would be raining as soon as we step out the sun would come and he would know where to take me 
and we'd have all these wild experiences. And so that's when I first went to Italy. But then we came back to America and I thought like, okay, she's going to teach me spells and rituals. And she did a little bit of that, my spirit guide, but she didn't really seem impressed by it. She's like, eh, whatever. Anyone can do that. And she kept pushing me to train like as a medium. And I was like, what's a medium? Yeah. And um, I ended up finding out what a medium was. I went to train as a medium, which basically taught me how to like connect with dead people and prove that they're still living through getting information. But then all these like goddesses that had to do with Italy's history and from other cultures who had a had a place in Italy started appearing to me like just as clearly as the dead people. And they started telling me all these interesting things about Italy's history, like a mix up of cultures and all sorts of ritualistic things. And I just kept writing it down and later on found out they were true. And so I decided, well, I'm going to go back to Italy on my own at some point because in the meanwhile, Davide had gone to Italy and found out his mom was part of a lineage family and, um, Mm. you know, meaning there are like witches in his family. And um, he brought me back a book that we translated together and it had all this evidence in it about the things that I'd gotten in my meditations or visions. So I'm like, wow, this is real, you know. But at that point, it was a personal passion. But then I kept feeling compelled to like go to the bookstore and buy this book and that book, and they were sort of historical books, which I ended up using later as footnotes. I didn't end up reading those books, but I would turn to the page and like there was the reference note that's worth it. So I had vowed to go back to Italy on my own to find out who are these healer ladies. Like, is it the same as magic? Is it different? And um, I bought the tickets. I happened to have a little bit of money come from a job I'd quit that I didn't know I had. Like, all these things started falling (laughs) in place. Well, not to interrupt you, but I think it's kind of funny that last week, before we even knew that you were coming on, when last Wednesday we were talking about, like, my my grandmother's Italian, and I was talking about how she was uh, very superstitious Mm. and where these superstitions came from and all this kind of stuff. And it's crazy that we were, all that stuff was brought up. Well, that's why I thought to ask her. Oh, is that what happened? Oh, all right. It's not a coincidental connection. It was, we were talking about Italy and and uh, superstition. We were talking about oh, yeah, those we guys that it. crucify themselves. Dude, you should just let me think that it was fucking, you know what I mean? <laughs> but I said it on like, the podcast. If you know. listen to it again, you'll I hear me know. say, oh, I should ask Karen to I come know. on. Oh, yeah, you I'm can say sorry, that. Continue. It was meant to be. It was just meant to be. <laughs> all right. I'm going to stop being hungover. I'm sorry. Continue. Oh, that's right. still hungover. So then basically a whole trip developed itself. Like all these people started contacting me because I made a little movie about it and did like a little sort of crowdfunding campaign. Mostly I wanted to get the word out there and um because davide couldn't go and i was like well i don't speak the language very well i don't oh, really know where i'm going and then all these people in italy reached out to me and said i'll connect you here i'll connect you there and and they're like all these people who don't normally give interviews like seem to know that you're coming here like old ladies in mountains and so i basically <laughs> showed up and traveled all over the country by train by myself and then people would pick me up and take me places and That's i would try crazy. cures and and you, you, had a, you had a different translator with you every time to kind of yes, help do help all that kind of stuff? Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. She, she has video of a lot of it. It's really yeah. cool. I'm going to have to watch it. Yeah. yeah, and I'm about to go back. So yeah. next, time she does a, time? next time she does a talk, you have to attend because she'll show video and explain. Like, I will. All this since stuff. there, I've I learned will. some of those traditions. Some people have passed down things to me and... You know, who knows what'll happen when I go back? Yeah, yeah. it's gonna be magical. <laughs> how long? How long were you there for in, in uh, doing all the research and that stuff? That last time I was there, almost two months, and then the first time was over a month. Okay. But I was, you know, not staying in hotels. I was like staying with people in little villages. Oh, that's and pretty things. cool. So, yeah, with locals. That's locals really cool. in like little middle of nowhere, yeah. which is awesome. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. Yeah. I'm sure you ate very well. I'm sure everybody. Some of the time, I mean, of course, the food there is incredible, but there was a lot of times where we're like trekking through mountains for nine hours. So, you know, I was like, I didn't really get to eat as much as I wanted. Uh, (laughs) So this time, hopefully I'll be able to eat more. But, you know, when I did eat, the food was spectacular, especially in the South. It's very, very cheap to eat in the South. Okay. And the food's like so fresh. Just unbelievable. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Tell them about the book and where they can get it. Oh, it's called (laughs) Italy's Witches and Medicine Women, Volume 1, and you can get it on Amazon or Amazon Europe, or my website, which is karencrisis.com. And so I'll be working on volume two, like going to places I haven't been to before this time around. Very cool. When did the book actually come out? It came out in October, like late October. Oh, okay. We had, a, we had a thing here. Yeah, she we gave a, a talk, release. a little book release I was here. out of town when that happened. Maybe you were out of town. I was. So we did that here. Yeah, yeah. it was really fun. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was definitely out of town because I remember that. Yeah. 
Very cool. Yes. Yeah. Damn it. Awesome you story. ruined, you burst my bubble. I didn't I mean you, to burst your bubble. You did. I, I thought it was like, well, I'm you know, sorry, but I'm nothing you. but honest all the time, which is a problem sometimes. No, it's all right. I don't it's think it's right. a problem. No. I think everyone should be like that. It's all yeah, right. It so, what do you, so what do you do full time? Is this like, is this like a full time thing for you? Sort of. I mean, it's like. It is sort of. Like I have a wacky life, as I mentioned. So full time, I'm pretty much, I'm writing three other books. I do readings Sweet. for people a lot, classes, like um, I do workshops on the material in the book or lectures. Um, and working on the new album, so and she does so readings, nice. which I need to get one, and you yeah, probably need to get one. I really Let's all get to, one. I was really disappointed with my last read. I was the one last time I went down me to too. New Orleans. I had my cards. Back she doesn't read cards. Yeah, no. I had a read. I read cards, but they're more sort of general cards. No palm readings. I don't know palm readings either. Yeah, I had a, yeah, pretty, cool. I had a reading done. I was very disappointed. <laughs> Why you? Maybe you yeah, get it one. just seemed like maybe bullshit you'll get to one me. from Karen. Yeah, I'll yeah. get the one from Karen. So I know I need to because my life is a disaster. It's up in the air right now, yeah. so that's the Aww. time to do it. When your life's up in the air, you kind of got to find out what the hell's going on. Yeah, you know? but everything happens for a reason, unfortunately. Uh, I don't know true. if I believe that. No, I do. I strongly believe that. I mean, why is you know, it's, why is there suffering and shit like all that fucking bullshit? It, People in well, India with no hands, like, there's no reason for children to suffer. And- I think that um, there's a lot of beliefs about karma. There's a lot of beliefs about. Many different things. Some people believe that we actually are reincarnated and we choose the life that we're born into in order to experience what's going to give us the most enlightenment in this life so that they don't have to repeat that shit Whoa. again. They think that we choose our parents and a lot of the things that, oh, that man. happen to us. Why? <laughs> because it, it <laughs> creates the greatest opportunity to learn. It's true. You know, like if. Should have chose someone else though. Well, maybe maybe after this life you'll have learned something, or maybe you're doomed to repeat it again. You know, that's that's one of the way, modes of thinking. <laughs> it's cool. It's cool. It's very deep. Yes. <laughs> deep. I gotta do some DMT to figure all this out. You know. <laughs> yeah, I have some purple. I just haven't done it yet. So. Okay, so yeah, it's a little scary. Yeah. Have you done? Did you, you do did it? I know I have it, but I'm afraid to do I it. I am too. All right, let's yeah. all do it together. Let's hold hands. Well, you can't. Yeah. We'll someone to has to watch you because you you're actually. Watch we believe in. You need someone to <laughs> watch <laughs> over <laughs> you. Yeah, because you're actually. Unless you want to join us. We should do it on the podcast. You oh can't my God, talk she's when you're on the I no, love her can't. more now. <laughs> you can't. She's so cute. Aww. Karen, you're so adorable. When I first saw Karen, what kind of cookies? I had I seen Crisis like a long story. time ago, but I always thought you were a bigger person Everyone until I like met that. you like one on one, and I'm like, oh, she's so tiny. Yeah. You just seem you have such a big presence. You know, what? people say that about me too, but I usually can tell when someone is really small. <laughs> I feel like, and you're just you know very. Large. Well, here's a funny story for you. Um, I'll you know Albany, New York, you know upstate was a big place for Crisis to play. We were, like play sold out shows there, and there's this really cool club called the QE2. And the circle, the stage was sort of like half a circle, so people were like hanging out on the sides. And of course, so it was really cramped in the hallway. And I was going to the bathroom before the show, and I was trying to get up to the stage because there was no like backstage, really, other than the basement. And this, I was passing people like trying. It was really crowded, <laughs> and these girls were like. Look at this bitch. Who does she Aww. think she is? Like pushing us around the car. I'm like, wait, it's me. You know, I'm just trying it's to get me. on stage. <laughs> but I didn't realize because I'm really short, and so it always surprises people when they meet me. Plus, That's I look funny. like I'm a 12 year old. Yeah, elf. you're just like this little, this little wood sprite. You, know? you have a big presence on stage too. I saw you a couple times. I saw you at CBGB's with this associate oh, one time, gosh. and so, I forget so else. And I remember seeing you in Boston years ago. You played Boston. Boston. Was it, was it the rat? Was it the rat? I saw oh, you. Yeah. yeah, I saw you with the rat. Why did the rat in Boston? He's, yeah. he's from there. Okay. Yeah, originally yeah. that's from. Oh. So yeah. He's a mass hole. Yes. <laughs> I'm a mass hole. That I am. A cool place. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was cool, man. It was cool back in the day. It's all gone now, but you know, like everything else. But, yeah. But yeah. But you had a big you had a big presence on stage she's, also. She does. Cool. Yeah. And then you're next to her, and you're like, oh, she's so delicate. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, in general, yeah. like daily life, I'm pretty quiet. But you know, on tour, like something would happen. I'd be like channeling that voice, and these huge <laughs> bodyguards would try to bully me, and I would get right up to their nose or their belly, whatever I could do. Yeah. <laughs> I was so short, and I didn't take shit from anybody. You know, it was different. But you know, we all have aspects, and sometimes 
you know, that aspect would come out on Sometimes on Kali Ma comes out. <laughs> yeah, but you're, you're also in a very uh, a masculine scene also. So you got it. You can't be pushed around or you got to oh, yeah. you know, oh, show yeah. you're a fucking badass. People don't realize that in the early 90s when Crisis was around, I was often like the only female in a bar. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, you had to hold your own, throw down here and there, you yeah. know, <laughs> get your knuckles dirty. And that's the way it was. Yeah. yeah. I mean, even now, it's most metal shows are still a sausage fest. <laughs> but there, there's a lot oh more God, women there's now. There's a lot more women, I know, but I still like, when unless it's like, <laughs> unless it's like, you know, a lot of the more mainstream metal, of course, women like it now, but I still go to shows where there's like almost no women. There's no but line going, on the bathroom. You're going to black metal shows, though. But women like black metal. It just yeah. depends on what it is. Yeah. Some of the weirder stuff, there's really not a lot of girls. At. And if you go to like really technical death metal, there's no girls at those shows no. either. So no. I love going to like a festival and like the men's li- men's bathroom line is like <laughs> forever. And then I go and there's like crickets <laughs> in the women's room. Like, well, this is awesome. That's yeah. why, listen, that's why here, I mean, when we first opened up here, the men's room was the ladies' room. Yeah, we had to switch first. the bathroom. Oh my God, I remember yeah. I was so confused. Yeah. yeah cause I was it, pissed off, man. I was like, damn, now I got to crunch in this little room. I know, room it kind of sucks. It does suck. It does suck. Yeah, yeah, purple, so much purple dances on the bar here. So <laughs> she can't change, she has to change her clothes in this tiny little closet. No. Sometimes I go in there. Yeah, yeah that's okay. This little back room. Is there a camera in there? We should put one in there so we can watch purple change. Oh, no. And that back, no one <laughs> on the camera back That's where they put all the equipment. I just go in there. Yeah. I'm teasing you. Yeah. I'm it's teasing okay. you. you stalk me. Only I you, know. Thank you. Don't show Jeff. <laughs> yeah. Karen, what's the, um, what's the, just whatever comes to mind, what's like the oddest or the funniest, like, spirit world thing that ever happened to you like somewhere you were not expecting it and it was like home, like maybe like someone else maybe thought you were nuts because you're like wait a minute I'm in the middle of like dealing with the spirits anything ever like that ever happened to you like you know when you were younger and you didn't necessarily think that when oh. you thought everybody probably was talking to sure you okay know? so the first date I went on <laughs> was it was before I went to college. I was like a late... I didn't really date much. So I went on a date with this guy. I graduated high school early because I was a nerd. Aww. And I was like, um, you know, awesome. enrolled in like the local college and working at the 99 cent store to save up money to go to New York. And then I would see this guy Adorable. at the juice bar in the corner. He had like a tattoo, you know, one tattoo. And, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, he was older than I was. So he took me out on a date. And he took me to this place that looked like it was out of a David Lynch movie. It was, um, it was some kind of a jazz bar with really low ceilings. And they had like white glitter ceiling. Mm. Maybe it wasn't really glittery, but it looked glittery, you know? Maybe right. it was asbestos. <laughs> right. And there was this, like, white um, sort of ceramic bar that, like, did these sort of a spirally, like, a, not a spiral, but a swirl. And there was this deep red carpet. And it was just very, like, ooh, this is, you know, interesting. And so we sat at the bar before we got seated to eat a meal. And, you know, it was, it was pretty crowded in there and people were bumping into me. I'm like, oh, sorry about that. But I was like, well, people are really friendly here because people kept bumping into me but they're like, hello, good evening. <laughs> and I'm like, people are so friendly, you know. I'd seen this little place and from the outside it looked like this, one of those just dank old man bars. But in the inside I was like, this is pretty interesting. And then we sat down for dinner and we were eating and at some point someone came over and said something to me, just like little conversation. I'm like, people here are really chatty. And the guy was getting quieter and quieter. And I'm like, you know, I was already a nerd with so, some low self-esteem. So I was like, oh, whatever. <laughs> so he drives me home. And he's about to drop me off. And he's like, again, I'm a real nerd. I didn't drink or anything. And he's like, okay, what kind of drugs are you on? I need to know. And I was like, oh, you know, what, what do you mean? And he's like, you've been talking to people all night who aren't there. <laughs> So I guess, like, all these oh. people who were talking to me, he couldn't see them, you know? <laughs> and I, I, it really gave me, like, a heart attack. I was really embarrassed because I think, like, a week or two before when I was working at that little 99 cent store, it was literally, like, one room, and then the manager would be in the back counting the drawer at night. And it was my task to um, vacuum. So I was vacuuming, and then I looked behind me, and I saw, like, this guy look like you know, like a ghost from the, like a cartoon ghost, transparent. But he was wearing like 1920s clothing and he had one of those thick mustaches. And I was like, okay, I'm just going to pretend I don't see him and sure. keep vacuuming. Because I was always aware of ghosts, but I, I couldn't always see them clearly in the room until this time period. So I went back to vacuuming and, you know, then I turned around for I felt more and there was a lady standing next to him. I still remember her dress. And then I was like, okay, we're going to get through this. We just haven't <laughs> slept in a while, you know, kept vacuuming. And I turned around, there was like 30 Oh, no, they just there. kept coming. 
men, women, and children. And, you know, I, I didn't really, I wasn't used to seeing them. So for, it sounds silly, but it weirded how, me how, out. How old were you? I was like 19. So that's when it kind of like became that's, more visual. Well, that's when it became visual. Yeah. I always sensed them. I could tell man, woman, crabby or not. But, and huh. so like I ran in the back and I pretended that the vacuum was broken and I was like making small talk with the manager and he was looking at me like, what's wrong with you? So I'd started having these experiences sure. where I was like, I don't know what to do with this. Yeah. I don't know why seeing them for me was so weird. I was used to just sensing well, them. Well, it was also like different all It was different. Yeah. yeah. And you're like, how to explain this? I'm not going to. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to not tell him. But you know, when someone else is around, and they see you talk to people who aren't there. That could be a little embarrassing. Yeah. yeah. Well, when did you like start to be able to tell the difference between actual people and? Well, know? I always was aware. Like um, my mom, you know, going to my relatives' houses, I always knew there were like ghosts in the house. And um, like my my mom's older sister had a son who would was older than I was so he was graduated but she'd always take us in her bedroom and brag about how he had this like angel that would come in his room at night and put a blanket over him and it was a crabby old lady I was like I didn't tell him but I was like I always see this lady in there she's grab she's crabby and she's like doesn't want anyone coming in this room you know and she's mean and I didn't like her I'd go upstairs and she was just like crotchety and so I was always aware but I would see that it was more like I could sense them and then I would build a visual image but for some reason seeing them in the room freaked me out and then seeing them so clearly that I didn't know they weren't real right, was embarrassing. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, how many conversations am I having that aren't really... Oh, man. That aren't really and that sort of shut it down. It right. went back to me just sensing them again you know, uh, for a while. Yeah. Interesting. So That's I had a few good. of those experiences, and I was like, I don't need to be weirder than I already am. Yeah. <laughs> and when I was a teenager and in my 20s, I would see a lot of things, and it's 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 faded off a lot over the last... It happens to a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. so... But I it guess was the more weird. you ignore it, it goes away. It was, well, yeah, I mean, you kind of have to, or you lose your mind. You can't... Like, I was avoiding certain blocks in the East Village because I would see things that were upsetting to me, and they weren't... And other people would be like, I don't, that's not there, you know? Sure. So... That's common. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I think there's um, from because I trained at a place it was like a Hogwarts for a while, you know. So like you meet other people like you, you know, and um, it seems to be there's like different doorways in people's lives, like in your twenties, mid thirties. You know, there's like these different times where like the spirit world will try to knock on your door and, and give you some huh. experiences that you can't ignore to kind of get you to ask questions. And you know, maybe not everyone's meant to walk through it in this life, you know, or not. But um, there definitely seem to be times when people have experiences that are generally age group kind of right. thing. I think for a lot of people it's when they're little kids and then oh, they just sure. they just let it go. For sure. You know? Like how many people have an imaginary friend when they're sure. a little kid? You know? And not everyone grows up in a supportive environment. You know? Right. So. Right. Yeah, exactly. And that's that's it though. Nobody you know, you start seeing stuff like that or hearing things like that, most parents will be like Yes. Like you're superstitious. You're crazy. Uh, oh, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's yeah the yeah, devil, yeah. you know. Yeah. 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 For sure. Growing up in a Catholic household, that'll happen too. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Was it the devil, Jeff? <laughs> the devil totally made me do it. Yeah. Totally made the devil me made it. you listen to heavy metal. Yeah. Oh, yeah. no. I still yeah. haven't met the devil. Yeah. I've met all sorts of you spirits, but I haven't met the devil. Yeah. yeah, wherever he may be. Yeah, I know. He might be the president of the United yeah. States. Yeah. <laughs> we may, we I may think know so. him. It's possible that we may know him. Jeff says he only has two two stories for you, which means you might need. To I think look it's one three. Up on your phone. Yeah, no, there was three. There was three. Oh, there is three. There was three. Yes. Yeah. You want to yeah, do some right. news? See if Karen has any commentary on today's heavy <laughs> metal news. I'll let you take the reins. <laughs> <laughs> no, there was. Uh, yeah, because there was another story I tried to pull up that was. Oh, fuck, I forget what it was. <laughs> you just spaced I think out you're so bad. bad. I did just space How much out. did you drink last night? Uh, too much. I, I stopped just, drinking for a week. I'm proud. Really? Has it been a week? What's today? It's Thursday, right? What's today? It's Wednesday, Purple. Tomorrow's a week. <laughs> Every week we do the podcast on Wednesday, Purple. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think I, it's tomorrow. I'm proud of you. I tried not to drink last night, but I'm proud. Not Chris, drinking Chris Santos made me do it. The devil made you do it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the devil made him do it. Pretty much. Oh, man. He's at the bottom of every whiskey bottle. <laughs> Chilling. Like, go kill this person. Tell us about, <laughs> tell us about something. The news. So uh, we got X Nevermore and X Forbidden guitarist Tim Calvert. He passes away at 52. Wow. Aww. Everybody's dying. Yeah, cancer. Oh, man. Jeff knows the news better than me. Well, I do glance, <laughs> I do glance it over when I'm ready to print it out. <laughs> So yeah, I guess he had some cancer. Cancer. What kind um, of cancer? 
Let's see. Da, 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 da. I forget what it said. I feel it doesn't like say what kind of some of them. It did, it some said, of them are really easy to cure, and some of them are oh, not. Amorthropic lateral sclerosis. sclerosis. I don't know. That doesn't sound good. ALS. I just saw it. ALS. 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 Yeah. There you go. Oh no, I don't like it. Well, he's dead, and you know. purple doesn't like it. Yeah, no. <laughs> you shouldn't like it. It's terrible. Yeah, it's not good. Cancer's not fun. No. Yeah, that was that one. And then the second one is Rob Zombie's House of a Thousand Corpses was a Jeopardy question. Okay, what do you do? Like, well, what are you gonna do, purple? Right? The news. <laughs> what are you gonna do? I don't know. They didn't say that. <laughs> what do you do? Yeah, she said, what do you do? That's not news that she's interested in, yeah. Jeff. You <laughs> gotta get the better. Yeah. More people dying, please. Yeah. <laughs> She'd be more interested if somebody else was like dropping s- dead. Well, you know what's funny too? I think one of the stories I was gonna print out. Remember how we said like, I don't like. Doing album reviews or like which set, I said we, it's stuff. okay sometimes it's alright but like I don't want to bore people no one's gonna you know be bored I mean? if we talk about some new album that came out that one of us likes but I was gonna put the one that I like because people do out, ask so. for you know for for recommendation for music yeah. recommendations Arthur and Punisher's working on a new record which I which you're excited about yeah it's what I'm excited about hmm. yes do you know Arthur and Punisher no nope. yes. You heard author the Punisher? Guy has like all the, he makes his own instruments. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 It's That's very cool. God fleshy. Very like, yeah, he's really interesting. Like, um, and I saw him live a couple times. Nice. And it's really interesting. Like, he's got this like lever thing that his like sliding bass. And then he's got this big wheel yeah. that's huh. in water and he spins it and it makes nice. this weird noise. Yeah. But he's like an engineer and he made all his own instruments. And very it's cool. It's I really have to cool. Hear this. It's on the jukebox. It's on the jukebox. Yeah. yeah. All this shit going on in the jukebox. Yeah, now, man. I is the jukebox like working now again? The jukebox is working. I don't, I don't think, know. I, I, I don't it think playing it, like two songs and then stopping. And then. Well, it's yeah. doing this weird skipping thing. It was, but I, I unplugged or? it. I unplugged it. We had to unplug it because it stopped Maybe taking it's money on the weekend. The so I left yeah. it unplugged for like a half an hour and then it was fine. I think it was possessed for a minute. Yeah, mm-hmm. it happened. It didn't, like, it didn't like certain songs. <laughs> it did, I don't know what it was possessed by, but it definitely had its song preferences. Whatever was possessing, because certain <laughs> songs were fine and then... Other songs were skipping, and it's a digital jukebox. It can't skip. Yeah. There's no reason for it to skip. Yeah, no. Well, it's, like, fuck listen, song, I gotta man. say it's weird. And listen, when we first came in this place, it felt very clean when we first came in yeah. here. There was nothing going on in here. I also saged the fuck out of this place. But there's stuff here now. There's stuff here now. Now there yeah. is. We, because, we invited in, you yeah, know? Yeah, because I, I was well, just sitting. Well, they follow us around, you know? Sometimes I'll just be sitting at the bar by myself. And it's not windy out, and that yeah. front door will just go, burp, burp, and I'm like, oh, all right. Somebody hey, what's came up? to visit. We had <laughs> yeah. some crazy spirit at the old Lucky Thirteen that was in love with Jeff, <laughs> and was yeah. really, really upset when we moved, uh-huh. and tried to like hurt him a couple of times. Yeah, it was bad, pretty intense. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. it was. Yeah. Re- it, it knew that that, or she knew. I know it was female. Ah. She knew that he that we were leaving because he started taking stuff off the walls mm, and of threw him off a table. Like oh, he had yeah. to go to the hospital. Sure. So it was intense. And then, oh my god, don't die, Jeff. No, listen, it hurt me. Like it really <laughs> Anything did. Anything like that's a, here that was just hanging out. Yeah. I don't feel anything. I might find like you one day, you know. Yeah, no. Bad. Well, maybe Karen could tell us more than I could tell. <laughs> I don't bitch. feel anything bad here. There, it felt not good. Some of my bartenders were like scared to go in the basement and like sure. really? close close for the night because they would lock up the bar and then they would hear footsteps upstairs and there was no one upstairs and they would just totally freak out. And so. it never bothered me. Like I felt like I had a connection to whatever was over there. Well, it and liked you until, until you we stopped moving. paying attention. Attention yeah. When you weren't keeping up on the plays. Yeah. And then when we were moving, it got yeah. really upset. Yeah, it did. And it was always this one corner by the ladies' bathroom that was most active, and it was crazy because it that turned like a she. Yeah. Definitely. And it, yeah. And it so it turned into um, an Irish pub. Now it's like oh. an Irish pub. <laughs> so um, one <laughs> night, not long after they had just opened up over there, and. Um, you my, your I, brother. Uh, my, my, yeah, my brother was in town and my father was in town, and we, we, they were like, "Oh, we want to see the old Lucky 13. So we went over there, and as soon as we walked in, sat down at the bar. There was nobody else in the bar. Dun, dun, that dun, same dun. spot, a picture just came flying no off way. the wall. Yeah, and hit the ground. I around. have a ghost in my apartment that like made shit fly out of in the cabinet in my bathroom, and like at night when I come home after work, like four in the morning, like through everything. Like I'll be in my bed, all the lights are off, the lights go on, and everything is off of my bar, like on the ground, like my. Vase was broken. You have, to have a, you have to have a talk with that. I saged yeah. it. And you have to have a talk with it. The I, thing is, the thing is that people don't realize about sage. You is can't that just burn it. Sage doesn't always just like clear things out. Sometimes it calls the spirits to your like 
to come to that. <laughs> yeah. They're like, oh, someone's calling me and things are changing. The energy's moving. So, like, when they're there, then it's time for to say, you know. Yeah, you, you have, have to, to tell say. tell to go. Or, yeah, you, you must speak. You can't just burn right. it. Yeah, oh, yeah. Palo Santo maybe is less. Freak um, me the hell out. You know, I don't know. I find it strange, like, every time, like, if I get anxiety that I can't get rid of or anything like that, like, I smudge myself. And yeah, I feel, feel better. better. Well, Calms yeah, me down immediately. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Why not? Yeah, works. Especially well, if you of believe spirits in Italy. Yes. <laughs> 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 because, um, you know, I told you I got handed down some of these practices and I've learned some of these like old recipes for like this incense that I make. And in Italy, like the spirit world is part of daily life. Like people there are just like, oh, yeah, you know, there's positive and negative spirits and, you know, taking care of your mental attitudes and your digestion is supposed to, hmm. you know, they believe like keep things online here and in order and um so there are, in italy people use things like um laurel leaf like bay leaf mm-hmm. and kind of like sage just burn it to clear the air and a lot of herbs like a lot of herbs that um like olive leaf that you take to help inflammation within your body and your digestion you can also burn them and, and clear negative spirits away there's always like a duality there like what works in the physical world for this will also help clear the air of you know Spirits. I mean, everyone around the world has their incense or burnable that right. helps right. you know, change those things. So. Um, I find it interesting that a lot of the you know the places she visited and the women there, the healer women, who I guess we would call witches from here, but you know they're just really healers, um, mm-hmm. grow all their own herbs because. Or they pick them from mountains. Know. They know how to harvest them. Yeah, yeah. they're they're That's getting amazing. their own stuff. You know, yeah. it's not like they're going to the enchantments and yeah. buying it. You know <laughs> what I mean? Yeah. So I think that's, that's awesome. Really actually, yeah. they know what's growing where, and then they grow what they need, and they there's like little old ladies, like you know. Yeah. There are plenty ladies. of like people who do modern magic too, but a lot yeah. of them too also get stuff out of their garden or yeah. you know, what, what's nearby or I love that. some of the basics. Yeah, unfortunately, we don't have the gardens here, and uh... <laughs> not so much in New York City. Not no. so much. Mm. Yeah. Do you have a Do you have a garden in your back? So do you have I a backyard or anything? Or? I don't have a backyard right now. Um, I'm living with a friend of mine, and we don't have any patches. But there's like there's a pine tree right outside, or you know, when I was in California, you could just go down the street, get olive branch off the tree, or I mean, there's stuff growing everywhere. Everyone has their stuff, so it's definitely an adjustment. Right. Yeah. Right, right, right. Are you near any right. parks? Um. Not, not really. really. No, not really. Mm-mm. But yeah, it's Forest a, Hills. There's no parks over there. I, I didn't know. Yeah, I don't really. think so. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of cemeteries in Queens. <laughs> there is a lot of cemeteries yeah. in Queens. But I brought a lot of, you know, plants that I dried from California, so I'm going to go back soon and I'll just get more. Yeah. <laughs> cool. nice. And then I'm go going to Italy soon, so I'll get some more. When are you leaving for Italy? May 31st. Awesome. So very soon. Cool. Very soon. I'm going to Finland next Ooh. week. That should be interesting. Oh, you been man. there before? I haven't. I have not been there before. I'm not going in any igloos. <laughs> Dude, there's going to be 50 awesome, degrees. Like, glass igloos. Yeah. It's summertime wow. purple. Yeah. Summer's coming. So the northern lights aren't going to be there either? I'm not. I'm going to be in Helsinki. I'm going to be in a city. True, so. true. <clears throat> Mostly. What are you going for? Bl- a black metal? Black metal festival. <laughs> well, I'm going, to, I'm going to see Helsinki. <laughs> Yeah. And then I'm going to go to Estonia for a day or two to see Tallinn because it's an old medieval city that hasn't really changed. Nice. So, and it's a two-hour ferry from Helsinki Great. to Tallinn. So I'm just going to leave my shit in my hotel mm. in Helsinki and go. And then if I want to stay a night, Estonia is, like, incredibly cheap. Like so, like, if I cool. just in case I decide I want to stay, I'll just grab a spot and stay nice. a night. Or not. Or cool. maybe I'll just go back if, I'm, if I feel like I've seen enough. So. Yeah. Because so. I'll be by myself, which I, which is awesome. Hell yeah! And then other yeah. people are coming for the festival, like later in the week. Yeah, uh-huh. I'm gonna be by. I like going places by I know myself. I like going by yourself. Me too. It's good. You get yeah. to walk. No one could stop you. And yeah, and also in places where you don't speak the language, like you really have to rely on your own, like sense instincts, of, your intuition, yeah, yeah. instincts, and where am I and. You know where where can I go to like find this or oh, yeah. you know it's 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 a good way to kind of hone your your survival skills and yeah. you know it's not I'm not like I'm going into the woods it's the city it's not that but still yeah, yeah things happen yeah. and yeah you know so. you can try to say ooh what will be the solution like when I first arrived well last time when I was in Italy I arrived. It took like a seven hour train ride to Rome where a friend was supposed to meet me up at this crazy train station, like really, really jam packed. 
train station and I arrived and my phone wasn't working or I had just gotten like a, a phone that I maybe I didn't know how to work right but I was like how do I find my friend yeah it's madness here and um, I tried to talk to some like police officers they're like oh yeah like 13 blocks away is a wi-fi place I'm like well that's not gonna work I'm just so happy I'm here I'm gonna go outside and like laugh and smile and it'll all work out you know <laughs> and I saw this guy who I'd seen on my train he was wearing like a metal shirt and um, we just kind of smile at each other. Like, you know, when you see some, you like yeah. each other bands and you're kind of like, oh, yeah. you're one of my people. <laughs> and I, people. And then he, as soon as I decided to like laugh and enjoy myself, he came walking by me outside. So I, I grabbed his attention and I, I spoke just a little bit of Italian and I was able to explain to him that I couldn't use my phone. And he was like, no problem. You can use mine. You know, and I was able to text my friend and he was somewhere where I never would have thought to look like right. Right, right, right. and um, so you know like little synchronicities yeah. when you travel alone happen like that yeah. if you're open to them mm-hmm. and I, like, I go to do? I go to India so when I go there it's like the craziest shit happens sure. to me and I this like the weirdest experiences mm-hmm. and I don't know if I had another person with me if and I'm talking to them yeah. and I'm paying attention to them if I would be so tuned into yeah, my yeah. surroundings you I know think you're right mm-hmm. yeah so it's interesting yeah, you know, yeah. it's people yeah. approach you more when you're alone too. I feel like I don't know. Like if you're with someone else, not like, necessarily. I think it depends. Well, females get well for like a female. More. I was gonna say yeah. like yeah. if I was with a dude, in no one's gonna come yeah, up to me you. and be my India friend. India is They'll different. Be, oh, she's with that dude, you know. Purple. It depends on where you are and how you dress. If you dress like that, you're gonna get approached. Yeah. <laughs> like that's the bottom line. Hey, like baby. when I go to India, I put on their <laughs> clothes and I look as. I cover my tattoos and I just cover myself up and nobody bothers me. So True. it's a matter of kind of trying to fit in a little bit with the, whatever culture you're in. And then, you know. <laughs> true, true. Yeah. yeah, I guess that day Kelsey was sick and I was wandering around by myself in Thailand was a little interesting. <laughs> yeah, there you yeah. go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You told How us. many hookers were trying to... Get Dude, are you kidding me? I told you, I felt like a fucking. I, I, felt, I, I felt like I knew what it felt like to be a woman in, in New York because, like, I'm walking down the street Doesn't and I was like, "Hey, baby, hey, long hair, hey, long hair, hey, big man, big man." <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, That's and like. I felt a little creepy. I yeah, was like, yeah, this is a cool down, man. Huh? Yeah. Uh, well, Welcome now it's going to gonna start because we've all taken off our coats. So now the oh, cat shit. calling is going to start. Yeah. It's officially this time of year when it really starts. Guys go wild. They get spring fever. Yeah. I know, and I they can see women's arms. Some dude you can see like, hey, my beautiful. arms. <laughs> you know? Oh, my God. My arms are bare. <laughs> animals. <laughs> Put your dick away. Yeah. So, yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> now it starts. Men are animals. Men are animals. Agreed. Yeah. I never do that. I never cat call. No, you're not. You're, I mean, you're sensitive. You're a sensitive in some ways. Yeah. bear. For a guy, you yeah. know, I've definitely seen in you cry over like Forrest Gump. So <laughs> I know you're not like every dude out there. Like, yeah. like Derek says, my friend Derek, who used to work here, who everybody here knows, but you, is a really nice guy, a really sweet guy. But he works for the sanitation department, and so everyone thinks he's gay because they're always screaming at the women. And he's like, "Cut it out! That's fucked up." <laughs> and and like he doesn't think it's it's cool or nice. Uh-huh. So they're like. You know, they give him a hard time about it. And he's, you know, vegetarian, so of course he's not a man. <laughs> right. No, so fuck that. Know. Like, listen, like, I got, I don't hang out with guys that do that. And if yeah, it's I gross. did, I'd be like, yo, cut it out. I got a fucking sister and a mother. Yeah. Like, shut the fuck up. It's gross. You know what I, mean? I think it's inappropriate. It is inappropriate. Yeah, if no one speaks up, then they're going to think it's okay and just keep doing it. Yeah, no. But, well, you know, I just wear headphones now. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't even look at them. I pretend they don't exist. Keeps it, keeps it under wraps. I'm like, wraps. what? You're a ghost. So all you guys <laughs> listening, I know a lot of men listen to this podcast. Shut your fucking mouth if you don't know a woman in the street. And Thank don't you. touch our butts, ever. <laughs> Who's touching your butt? I don't know, man. Someone touched my butt when I was dancing the other day. and I was. Well, you were you dancing. Remember, you remember that guy? We, we, went to, we went to go see Slayer one time, and we were in the fucking... Uh, we were on the, it was at Roseland. Times we were, Square? No, we, and we were on the balcony. Do you remember this? And we were sitting on the balcony, and all of a sudden, like... This melody's like, get your fucking hand off my ass. Do you remember that? Oh my and there was this fucking giant dude behind her, just had his hand like on her ass. And my oh my hair, God, I beat my hair was down, so he probably thought I was a chick. You know what no. I mean? 
And then all of a sudden, like, I turn around and I'm like, yo, motherfucker, really? And no. and uh, he, like, and he was a big dude. And all of a sudden, his face just dropped like he was fucking ashamed. You know what <laughs> and he, like, and he walked I've away. I yelled at so many guys for touching my ass. Remember the guy I hit in Times Square? Yes, we were going we to were see. We were going to BB King's. To see Peter Murphy, was it? I don't remember. Yeah. Oh, my God. We harassment. Gonna, yeah, we were going everywhere. to BB King's. And uh, you remember, yeah, some guy, just, some Mexican guy, just walked by and grabbed her ass. She starts beating him up. I go, <laughs> I go running over Good. there, and some. Remember, there was like a couple walking down the block. They're like, "Oh, hey, Melody," and just like fucking ran. Yeah, away. And they knew me. <laughs> Melody's and I'm like, beating some guy <laughs> on the street. I'm like, "This will teach you not to not to touch women." And they were a crowd forming, and they were like applauding. Yeah. It was actually amazing. Oh my god, I don't like to so beat people cool. up. But no, yeah, it's it not. Funny. It shouldn't happen in the first Dude, place. Yeah, you know, but it was funny because you yelled at him. And I went walking over, and you just came right from behind me and just jumped on him. It was like, <laughs> <laughs> love it. Don't touch my ass, guys. Yeah. Seriously, ever. No one's ass. an eye. Fucking animals. Or anything. What else you got in the news, Purple? Well, um, Jeopardy, I didn't know. I guess it got more interesting. It got more interesting that that House of a Thousand Corpses was mentioned on Jeopardy. No, it's really not that interesting. It's not that interesting. Well, kind of, because Slayer's in it. But, um, yeah, so what they the also question? had questions featuring uh, Slipknot, Megadeth, and Rage Against the Machine. Was it like Metal Slayer. Jeopardy? I, I don't know. No, there's like a category them in there, you know? No, but they've, they've, they've said before, like, I remember one of the questions was like, uh, um, who was, uh, how do they fucking phrase the questions on Jeopardy again? What is or who is blah, blah, blah. Yeah, who is the big, there was like a big four question, and they named all the other bands. And oh, really? Who was the, the one, one that more. wasn't? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 But did, but this sounds like, or is this just uh, not in one show? They're just saying these are all the questions yes. that have been asked. Yes. Yeah, in yeah, general, yeah. 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 In There's general, been metal, mm-hmm. There's been metal questions on Jeopardy. Woo, woo, woo. And then we got, is Guns N' Roses reuniting the, ent- the entire Appetite for Destruction lineup? That would be a care. I was never a big Guns N' Roses guy. Well, I mean, they're... Humans. They they out there. They started a genre. Yeah, they did. Appetite for Destruction was was something new, and it was huge. It was one of my first you concerts, know? though. Okay, so that's interesting. Yeah. Well, when Guns N' Roses announced that uh, Slash and Duff McKagan, is that am I saying that right? I don't know. His yes. last name. Cool, I did it. We're back in the band. It was a huge deal. The band then announced the Not in This Lifetime tour, a name referencing numerous comments made by Slash and vocalist Axl Rose over the years that they'd never get back together, which quickly became one of the highest grossing tours of all time. Um, still, some fans were wondering if we'd ever see a full Appetite for Destruction lineup re- reunion. The reunion was um, included performances by drummer Steven Adler. They all hate each other, don't they? Who don't was know. more than happy to join I the mean, band. They just made tons of fucking money on that tour. Yeah. I know I sp- spent uh, $500 for two tickets to take my boyfriend to that show. Oh, uh, yeah. Damn. For his birthday. So, uh, that and that wasn't even the most expensive tickets. There were more expensive tickets available. So, how much money? They sold out the garden. More than once yeah. with wow. those prices. Yeah. So how much money did Everyone they make? Loves them. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know they have a huge entourage and they have things to pay Still, for, but I, I actually, can't even imagine. Actually did pretty well. Yeah, that's Karen, what I'm saying. Who were your influences? Like, there wasn't many girls doing what you did back in 1991, 92. Like, yeah. how did that come about? Because there was no, I, I mean, I don't know any other girl that was screaming the way you were screaming. I know. It was, hmm. re- well, remember when you were talking about um, the guy who made his own instruments? Yeah. So in the in the 80s, you know, I lived near Chicago. Well, I lived right outside Chicago. And I was into this, um, I listened to stuff like really early Cocteau Twins and the Sugar Cubes. All right. Like with, you know, and I knew like Susie and the Banshees, but I liked this really ethereal vocal style. And so I would do that. But then I discovered that German band, Einstutz and Neubauten. You know oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And so they did stuff that, like, their earlier albums were kind of like that. Like, they would make their own instruments, or, or if they'd play a concert, they'd get garbage and make stuff out of it. And the singer, um, he had some of these songs where he would just do these, like, real primal kind of gut-wrenching screams. Hmm. And I was like, oh, uh, <laughs> you know, that's it. I Just something inside me was like, I have to do that. And... Um, so I was like making music in my bedroom, and one day, like my own scream just came out. It was All like right. almost like a That's therapy awesome. or something, you know. And it took me a while to do that in front of people, but um, and so that's how my own music sounded. It was like these sort of ethereal songs full of despair, and then they would go to this like soul purging screams. And so 
you know, I, there weren't a lot of people doing that. It was more like just I heard one or two things that made me feel like, oh, I need to do that inside myself. Right. And so when I got invited to audition for Crisis, that's how I'd sort of been singing. I didn't really know metal. Right. I'm, I'm always one of these weird peoples that whatever I'm doing, I don't really know the history or what people are doing around me. Right. I'm sort of like innocent, naive in that way. So like here I am I going to become a medium, scene. and I don't know what a medium is. Yeah, right. yeah. That's, that's that's my life in a yeah. nutshell. So that's what it was. It was more like, um, you know, using music as my own landscape. Like you know, I would sit in front of the turntable at night, listening to music with a candle, and trying to escape my dreary reality through music. And so for me, it was like expression. And so when it was my turn to express. Well, those are the things I like, these moody, atmospheric stuff, and then this, like, primal power. Um, So that's where it all started. That's cool. Did you start, like, just singing, like, not screaming, and then move from regular singing to screaming? Yeah, but it was, like, an afternoon. It wasn't really, like, a practice thing, you know, because I had a guitar and a four-track, so I would sing in my house when my family was not around, and... (laughs) Um, How did you scream? Because like I sing too, and I, just I, that's something I want to do. Really I want to scream, out. and I just can't. And just people let said it out. that, but people would say that to me live, like in the early crisis shows. Um, this guy came up to me, and he's like, "I'm an opera singer, and I want to tell you <gasps> that I was watching you do all that screaming because I had never lose my voice." And he would say, "Oh, you're doing it right. I can see that you're pushing yeah. the air out of your diaphragm." And I was like, "What's the diaphragm?" Yeah. <laughs> nice. right. But you know, I guess naturally I was not doing it out of my throat; yeah. I was doing it out of my belly. Um, so again, it was a natural thing, and people were like, "How do you cool. develop that?" Well, I'd listen to my voice. You know, I'd go to rehearsal, and I could tell my throat was dry. So, you know, like I shouldn't be drinking coffee mm. right now because I'm working on the new album, and it dries up my throat. So I'm trying yeah. to like, it's but so I would tiny. listen to my body. I would listen to my body. What does my body need? You know, and that's how I'd find food or more water or lemon, and it, and that's how singing was. I would hear the songs before I could sing them, and oftentimes they were like too high that I could reach. Hmm. Yeah. I was like, okay, I have to reach it. And poof, I would reach it. Like the Gospel of the Witches album. Yeah. Which is amazing, people. Oh, thank you. I but love there's, it. there's ways that I, that I sing on that album that I had never sung before. And I only sang for two months before that album came. So I was rehearsing every day for two months. And I hadn't sung in like five years. So technically, it's like, weird. Hmm. how was I able to do that? I was channeling. Yeah. <laughs> I showed up to practice every day for, for two months before I went to studio, but I was doing it in a pillow in the used car. I was <laughs> doing it in friends' basements, you know. Yeah, yeah. I did not I was in San Francisco. There weren't like a lot of rehearsal spaces, you know, when I needed them. So it was another one of those really weird things. It was <laughs> just awesome. I'm supposed to do it and I said, Okay, I'm it's supposed to do that. My spirit says I should do this, I'm gonna do it, and then poof, it happened. Nice. <laughs> It's like, uh, you know, you hear it in your head, and sometimes you're brave enough to do it out loud, and yeah, then that, yeah. that's the result. Yeah. Awesome. It's uh, great. But then after that, I was like, oh, I love metal drums. You know, I mean, it was like, then I got exposed to the world of mm-hmm. metal. Right, right. I didn't really know much about it before that. That's cool. The, the guy out front, the guy painting out front is John. Johnny. From, she knows Johnny. Yeah, he was saying, like... That he, like, they just played with you a few times mm-hmm. here and there, just yeah, randomly. Yeah. So everyone was exposed to all these interesting things. If you were in a band back then, you got yeah. to see all the other bands that you played with that were all yeah. doing interesting things. Yeah. Because it was a time of a lot of experimental yes. stuff. So Absolutely. that's yeah. awesome. And that was a lot, there was a big crossover there with the metal, hardcore, punk rock, yeah. all that stuff was kind of all meshing together. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah it was a cool time. Too, so yeah. A bunch of stuff. Yeah, it was a cool time. Mm-hmm. Uh, purple. Melissa Cross, the Zen of Screaming. Yes, Melissa Cross. Oh, yeah. The Zen of her. Screaming. Zen? It's Scream. The Zen of Screaming. It's yeah. a, you could find it on YouTube. Yeah. It's a it's a good way to show you She'll how to. She'll teach you how awesome. to sing from the scream from the diaphragm and not yeah. from the throat. Over the pencil. She teaches um, cool. metal singers how to okay. sing and without losing. Their well, you don't need that. For yeah. She doesn't need that. But <laughs> I need who it because I know she doesn't know. Well, because I know. Listen, it. it saved my voice for singing. Like I wasn't yeah. doing it right. I was constantly oh, really? blowing Speaking my voice. Speaking of out. which, we Jeff, learn something. Jeff's band is playing here this Saturday. Oh, really? Yes, we are. Cinco de Mayo. See. Gozu, Eyes yeah. of the Sun, and Sons of Ghidorah. And Sons of Ghidorah. What time are you going on? We're going on around ten, ten thirty, okay, somewhere great. like that. Great. Uh, Actually, yeah. what time do you finish? Like, how long is your set? We're doing like 40 minutes, half hour, 40 minutes, something like that. Maybe I could come like and then go to work. 
Yeah. Come and then go to work. Yeah. Mad late. Like, oh, yeah, go late. Tell them your car broke down. Yeah, I'll be like, I got flat <laughs> tires. <Yeah. laughs> Bullshit. Hopefully they don't listen to this. Yeah, hopefully they don't listen to the podcast. I don't yeah. think they do. I'm not going to be late. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it should be fun. It should be a good show. I'm um, looking forward to seeing Gozu here again, and I'm looking forward to playing Lucky 13. Do you want to talk about the, since we have trouble with the genres? Mm-hmm. Do you want to talk about what genre you are or Gozu is? Because when I make hashtags, I'm always like, I don't know if this is making anybody happy. Go, well, no, I mean, Gozu, Gozu is kind of straightforward stoner, rock, metal, you know I'm what I down. mean? Um, we are. You really like them, actually. Yeah, you would like Gozu's good. It's very kind of. Sometimes the show start. It's going to start a little bit. It's only three bands. Yeah, it's only three bands. We're going to start a little bit late because um, okay. I don't know why not. And um, there's. Yeah, they're very much like that. We are. We always get lumped into the doom right. category. Right. Doom. Yeah, we always get lumped into kind of a doom, doom category. Doom, but doom. I think we are a little more atmospheric. You know what I mean? I don't yeah. know. We got some weird stuff going on. I agree. So, um, so yeah, I don't know. We always get lumped into the doom category. Atmospheric doom. Yes. Hashtag. We, we always kind of get lumped into <laughs> the doom category. But yeah. And then Sons of Ghidorah are kind of the same, like kind of Gozu-ish. Okay. So they're kind of stone and rock. So. so come on down. Oh, Saturday man, I night. I definitely got to be here. Saturday yeah. night. Yeah, it'll be good. Sweet. Yeah. Yep. Do we have any more stories? Or are we done with the news? No more stories. I think that was it because I ran out it? of printer ink. I was waiting for uh, <laughs> Jeff's burp. You know, he always does well, one good burp. What you should do is cut and paste the story so that you don't have to print out all those photos, which wastes all the printer ink. You should cut and paste the story yeah, onto ink. just a page and yeah, just print it. Like, every, and you, someone's you dead. Next page. Any <laughs> I should do that. Yeah, I'll, I sh- should I'll do show that. you. How yeah, show me how to do that. Like a p- big deal. I'm not a. The I most. know you're not the most computer. <laughs> no, but but there's a setting on my home computer. I like it when I print it out at home. I don't even it, have a computer. There's a it, at like home. Like I can do it on a whatever. I can simplify the page. Right. And it only does the print. Prints out the right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But this one doesn't have simplified a page on it, so. Well, you, there might be a way to do it from the website, or, or just to cut and paste yeah. it. But we can, I can show you. That. All right, good, <laughs> good. I hate buying. Anything it. else to report anybody? Yeah. Hmm. No. Not, I, go ahead. I, again, Karen, where can we get your book? In um, oh, Amazon. Amazon. And if you want to get, she does phone readings too. So if you um, if you don't live in New York and you want to get a reading from Karen, is it Karen Crisis Heals or is it just Karen Crisis? Yeah, KarenCrisisHeals.com. Okay. How do you do a phone reading? Um, I'm really clairaudient, so for me, I sort of tune into someone's energy before the reading starts, and I kind of see where things are going because I'll ask my guides like. What's going on in this person's life? But then when I hear someone's name, that helps, sort of helps me tune in and questions. When people ask specific questions, I sort of see what my guides are giving me back. Sometimes it's information. Sometimes it's visuals. Um, but, yeah, like, I don't need to have someone in front of me. And sometimes having people in front of me is almost distracting. Yeah. Because the physical is very different from what's underneath the surface. Mm-hmm. Um, I have the same yeah. problem, which is why I've, I only do tarot readings through the computer oh, now. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't, if I can't do them in person so much yeah. anymore because there's too much going on. You know, you're you're already used to seeing people physically, but there's all the emotions and thoughts and everything underneath the surface, which everybody feels anyway. Right. Mm-hmm. But that's what you're really tuning into. You know, someone's who they Energy. are without not this right, right, right. It. so for me i like it better that way even i've done a lot of um like skype readings but sometimes i find, and sometimes they can be really incredible but i also feel like it's distracting because i'm not listening to the person i'm listening to their spirit and what my guides say right, right right so which is different from you know some people like that physical touch especially if they're doing cards everybody's different right right, right. yeah cool so that's an option. And also, Karen is an artist, and so she does really amazing paintings, of which I've bought one. And I think you can get some of her artwork on her website There's nothing as well. left right now. No? Gotta... Do you have any prints, even? Not at the moment. Not at the moment? Okay, totally maybe they can out. just look and be oh. jealous. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have the Gospel of the Witches album artwork left, and that's it. But, you know, hopefully when I get back from Italy, I'll be... I really want to do some new paintings. So yeah. It's been a really long time, so... Cool. Right. Yeah, yeah. Thank well, Karen, you so much for coming. Yeah, thank on. you for coming. Oh, awesome. Thank you very much. Very interesting. All right, we'll see you guys. We'll talk to you guys next yes, week. Yes, I'm here next, next week. week, and then I'm not here the following week. All right. Okay, same I'm leaving next ish. Friday. All right. Yeah, I think Purple and I are away the same time again. Yeah, and I'm leaving so, on the 21st. I know you are. Yes. So when are you coming back? So we might miss two weeks of podcast. Where are you going? I'm going on a long motorcycle trip. 
Ah. Going down to, I'm going to hurt uh, your bum bum. You better be all right. Better wear those padded I shorts. I got that nice new motorcycle yeah. that my... Okay, uh, that's my, fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm going down to Florida, then I'm shooting Ooh. over... Shooting over to New Orleans, and then I'm going to come back up through Nashville, and I don't know, wherever I feel like stopping. It's kind of like... You're going by yourself? No, Kelsey's coming. She's going to be on the back? She's going to be on the back. Oh, my God. And I figure wherever uh, we feel like stopping, we'll stop. Yeah, if we want to stay somewhere for a couple days, I have we'll some like recommendations so for you in either rain. New Orleans or Nashville, Okay. just so you know. Yeah, okay. what kind of recommendations? Like places yeah. that you might not go find otherwise. All right. Okay. Cool. Uh-huh. She's like, okay. <laughs> All right, we'll talk to Friday. And don't get, don't get a reading in New Orleans. Get a reading from Karen I'm instead. not, you know, I was, I, my last reading in New Orleans was really disappointing. Was like, it? I just feel like it was bullshit. Yeah, you know sometimes I mean? it like, is. Yeah. Sometimes it is. I need a reading. Yeah. Let's do it right now. All right. Thank All right. you, Karen. I got all this work for you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We'll Thanks talk to everybody. you guys next week. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.